Jean-Francois Millet is again going to find his subjects amongst the ordinary masses. He's one of the Barbizon painters. He's known for his detailed and yet very loose images of the French countryside. And this is another step towards Impressionism, that looseness of form capturing a moment in time, a key element of Impressionism later on. But we're not here to talk about Impressionism. We're here to talk about the Gleaners, this incredibly famous painting of the period. Here, women are gleaning the last scraps of wheat. So what's happening is the farmer, usually upper class landowner, is going to, as a form of philanthropy, allow the poor in the community to glean the field. And what that means is they get to walk through the field after the harvest, picking up the individual wheat berries that have been left by the farmers. Now, to them, to the farmers, this is great charity. Look at the wonderful thing that I'm doing. I'm giving them access to the wheat. But let me put this in perspective for you. What if I were to take uh, one of those Quaker Oats containers and dump it out across a football field and then say, hey, I'm being really charitable today. Go pick up as much as you want and imagine the time that it would take to even have a single serving. And that's what we're seeing here. A juxtaposition, an element of class. So that's what we're looking at. That's what he's trying to show us. And we see that juxtaposition, most importantly, when we look at the farmer's harvest in the background. Look at all that wheat. Giant piles of wheat everywhere. He has lots of people working for him. He has this massive manor house or farmhouse in the distance. There's tons and tons of food. Now look at how little they have. They probably couldn't cook a loaf of bread with the amount that they have picked up. The problem here is class, is the separation of classes, how good the upper class has it, especially in comparison to the poor. As a proper working society, you would imagine that the two would be a lot closer, but not here. And again, the public will react to this painting with disdain and suspicion. Again, we have an artist acting as social consciousness to the nation. Now, interestingly, the middle class did not typically allow gleaning rights. Only the upper class did. The reason is the middle class is constantly afraid of falling into the working or poor class. They're a lot closer to it. Whereas the upper class has sort of other classes between them and the working class and the poor. So they don't have the same concerns. Uh, so the middle class did not allow gleaning rights and felt that the poor were dangerous, especially these new ideas of Marxism. Now, tell me if any of that sounds familiar. These are ideas that we have even today when you look at the inequalities in society, which makes this a powerful statement, which is why artists such as Banksy have used it as such here as a symbol of class to this very day giving us that sense of the rich having everything and the poor barely getting along, the rich having nine cookies and the poor fighting over one. It's the same thing. And that's the universality of this painting of Millet's work. It applies to mid 19th century France. It applies to 20th century or 21st century in the United States. It is a universal concept that there will be inequality. And Malay is arguing that how a society deals with that inequality is really how we should judge a society. That's the beauty of realism. He's again bringing us a problem in society, acting as social consciousness, and forcing us to look at the problem. 